değerli konuklar. Herhalde sizler de fark ediyorsunuz. Distinguished participants, I believe that you all recognized that everybody advertised their own company after the speech of the Deputy Prime Minister. But in this session, we will really speak about the growth strategies in a digital era together with the business leaders and the sector leaders. And just before the lunch break, we are glad to address our participants. A tetabyte, exabyte, a megabyte, are those words familiar to each and all of you? If you know those words, you are in the right place at the right time. If you do not know about those words, you will need those words in the upcoming years. Especially in the upcoming business world, you will reach the days in which by using those concepts, you will assess your capacity. Because right now our business models are changing and the big data is penetrating into our lives. And in this panel, we will speak about transformation, innovation, and their footprints in the global sense. And we will focus on the Turkish market. Andrew Haig from Forcecare said that when one billion people communicate with each other on the digital world, we start to see the miracle. And the t temperatures are increasing, for example, 2%, and we can uh, learn about this situation immediately because those data uh, can calculate everything, and these are quite remarkable for the potential growth. With 170 years of innovation, General Electric became the pioneering companies for the innovations and this digital reality will be the future of the industry. Industrial Internet is a really important concept because the industrial revolution has come to the maturity and we actually passed through the Internet age and right now we are combining with uh, each other. Uh, different manufacturing uh, processes, for example, with the 3D pr printing methodology, just in a couple of hours, the manufacturing process can be realized, which uh, took uh, uh, actually months in the past. And not only with our experience, but by benefiting from the global experience, we are going through an open innovation process. The governments are collaborating with the industry. The industries are cooperating with the uh, universities. And this is such a uh, business environment that we are working with. And this innovation will increase the manufacturing capacity and it will shape the supply chain or not, we will discuss about this issue. In this session, I would like to ask my first question to Tamer Özmen. Internet of Things will be having the value of $1.9 trillion. So it will equal to approximately two to three uh, times more the GDP of Turkey. In order to realize this, commercial innovation, uh, differentiation, and the intellectual property rights are really important factors for the Internet of Things. According to your belief, among those factors which uh, uh, are very important and with which uh, of them we will see them in our reality. If you go back to 15 years before, the Internet actually changed the whole world in 1999. With the launch of the Internet, uh, uh, the whole environment changed. And in 2006, smartphones penetrated into our lives, and we had such a huge transformation again. And this uh, transformation process with the smartphones lasted for six or seven years. And with the launch of cloud technology, those transformation process will last approximately f uh, five years. And according to the Gartner figures, in 2020, 
24 billion devices will be communicating with each other simultaneously. So this is four times bigger than the world population. In the pa uh, past, maybe 13 people were trying to uh, actually transport a machine in the past, but in 2020 uh, or 2024, there is going to be sensors on the uh, farming lands. So this revolution is controlling our lives. Of course, we will speak about the impacts of this changing technology, but right now I would like to speak what Microsoft is doing about this. Microsoft changed its strategy in order to adapt itself to this uh, changing technology. Right now, uh, Microsoft uh, is trying to be a manufacturing company in the mobile first uh, sector. By the way, I'm not trying to advertise my company, but I am trying to say that even the big companies like Microsoft should change the, uh, themselves in order to survive in such an environment. There are many devices in the market right now, and these devices should be controlled. And the strategy of the big companies should be ch uh, changed because many companies uh, claims that we are controlling many devices with thanks to the cloud technology. And all of those companies are investing uh, in the cloud technology. For example, uh, Bayman, the, uh, one of the most important retail uh, company in Turkey, uh, integrates and adapts in itself to the cloud technology. So this cloud platform is becoming very essential. And as individuals, we will not be able to monitor and control this uh, cloud platform. Maybe we can uh, control our own devices, but when it is the issue of controlling 24 billion devices, it is not going to be feasible to be controlled by uh, the individuals. The uh, productivity and the reinvention of the productivity is uh, really important because productivity has many uh, pillars. P productivity can be benefited in order to reduce your costs or uh, productivity can be used in order to improve your business models. Right now, the companies are working on to differentiate their productivity. And there are three pillars of uh, those uh, productivity. Education is one of them. Education is the most essential pillar of the productivity. In such a changing and uh, global world, the education should be controlled and managed in the most appropriate manner, because the uh, with, through the education, the next generation will shape the future. And uh, how can we differentiate our education? How can we benefit from the big data in our education? is a very important question. For example, a mathematician a teacher in cars uh, might actually teach mathematics much, uh, more, uh, much actually uh, more well with comparison to the Eskisehir uh, mathematician. How can we disseminate this good way of teaching to the whole Turkey will be the, uh, our priority. And we will also focus on the economic sustainability. We will focus on increasing the turnover of the companies and reducing their costs. Uh, systemic sustainability is another important uh, issue. In the uh, health sector, for example, those nanobot robots will be given to our uh, bodies and they will fight against the cancer. Maybe we will not use the antibiotics anymore. So the world is right now transforming itself to the artificial intelligence AI. In Skype, for example, you are speaking in English and uh, the one who, whom you are dialing with is speaking in Spanish and you can communicate with each other. And we had such a pilot uh, implementation of it with the Spanish school in Turkey and our children uh, were able to communicate with each other. What I'm trying to say here is that if as individuals or as companies uh, can not adapt ourselves to this uh, revolution, then we will be outside of this uh, revolution and it is just a matter of survival right now. Thank you very much. It was a very good introduction. Right now, I would like to ask the same question to our uh, panelists. Jane, uh, I would like to address this question to Jane Boyner. 
the gardener of Seoul said that if the uh, technology if the oil of the 21st country, the analytics will be the engine of, of that car to operate. So as a good as the biggest companies uh, in your sector, what are you going to do in your sector if you would like to adapt yourself to the technology? We have two sessions, right? Yes, we will have only uh, two rounds. Turkey do not have gas, Turkey do not have oil, and we cannot say that the education system is very well established in Turkey. How can we differentiate Turkey in the global uh, competition? We can uh, n not actually reduce this uh, gap with small steps. We should uh, actually jump uh, in order to reduce these gaps. So we should take some risks. We should uh, try new things. We, uh, if uh, those applications uh, are going to be proven successful, then we will actually write the history. In terms of innovation, it is a time for Turkey to take risks. And the mobile technologies and the digital technologies are providing us utmost opportunities for uh, producing the innovation. Uh, for example, a tourist go to the UK and so uh, the everywhere there is green fields. And they ask how there are actually green fields in your countries, and they are very well disseminated. The UK uh, person said, we are watering them. We are irrigating them all the time. And the tourists said, we are irrigating our green fields all the time, but they are not green. And the UK uh, man said, we are irrigating them for 1,000 1, years. Uh, the Turkish people read eight newspapers on daily basis. And I am acquiring 11 kilograms of journals on a yearly, annual basis. And actually, 90% of those journals are going to the garbage. If those journals are about healthy living, it is not of my interest. If there is an advertisement about the health sector, I am uh, cutting that part from that journal. So th the most important part, the uh, parts which intrigues my interest, are collected by me. So this journalism will transform itself in the future as well. But we should understand a very important thing. If we can prepare a specific journal for each specific consumer, is it feasible? We have 23 million journal subscribers, and we assess those uh, subscribers all the time. We know our subscribers very well. Uh, you can uh, acquire, for example, our uh, consumers are actually uh, buying Adidas uh, Knickers, but are they buying those Adidas sneakers in order to play at tennis or in order to sh uh, show off? Uh, we know it because we know our uh, cost, uh, customers. If, for example, our subscribers are losing weight, are we going to advertise, uh, uh, for example, gym offers or not? We know it because consumers are speaking with us and consumers are awaiting for such advertisements. That, I, that is what I believe. I had many tweets in the last couple of months. A man uh, has been sent a woman product as an advertisement, and we had complaints. And they were complaining whether you do know our, uh, your consumers or not. Of course, those consumers do not want those red lines to be uh, actually abused and violated. But right now, in the global market, we are speaking about 11 billion people. And those 11 billion people are not going anywhere without their mobile phones on their uh, pockets. And through mobile technology, uh, 
we have 40% of sales in the total sum and the mobile sales are increasing every year because we are selling a detailed uh, cloth from that small screen of uh, mobile uh, technologies. The mobile sales equals to 40% of the whole sales. In the upcoming years, we expect those sales to reach 60% of the total sum. But right now, everybody would like to see about the offers that intrigue their interest. And our consumers and our subscribers who are going to the gym would like to hear about the organic product and the organic fruits and etc. Of course, those awareness lead us to establish such a uh, good collaboration. We are reaching to our customers. There is no problem with that. And the Turkcell is actually intervening in that process to prevent us from making mistakes. For example, if our uh, con uh, consumers are on a Fenerbahce football match and if they are shouting, those advertisements are not sent at that time uh, in order uh, for consumers not to miss them. So the retail sector is changing. It is changing its color from uh, white to uh, black. In the past, there was a period of spray and pray because you are launching your product into the market and you were uh, waiting that your consumers will reach to your products. But uh, it was not very successful. It, its success rate was about 2%. But if you advertise the products which are special to that specific consumer, then you can be uh, successful. It is also the same issue in the uh, back and forth retail. Uh, when uh, I launch that product, that product should be ready in the shopping uh, malls or in the shopping centers after the uh, uh, 10 minutes of the launch. And that product should wait in that shopping centers for two months or three months. But with this technology, we will know that uh, which consumers would like to buy what kind of products. So this will eradicate the inefficiency in, uh, in the retail sector systems. Of course, I will make much more detailed explanation in the upcoming sessions. Mr. Hakan, digitalization starts with banking. It's a uh, really major industry in Turkey too. What do you think about the issue? After listening to my fellow panelists, I would like to uh, think to myself about what is due to happen in the future. I did it actually, so I will make a different start. Digitalization is growing like an avalanche and the mobile side is really on the rise. Thomas Edison once said, electricity is going to be so cheap one day, only the rich are going to light candles. Well, we are going to that point really fast. If you are people who have realized this in advance, and, uh, but did not attribute importance to partnerships, it happens like what you see in uh, Turkey. But I need, even as a bank, all the brands that I can see here to sell, beam, anything that you can th think of, service providers, retailers, everything. We have an affiliate called uh, Intertech, Tama did not mention, but we have over 800 uh, computer engineers under the age of 30, for example, in that company. They have developed so many products that together with Microsoft, we, have to, we had to redefine core banking systems. And we also sold them to other banks. For example, uh, a bank that is operating in the Eastern Europe region 
has uh, equipped all of its branches in the Eastern uh, Europe region with our banking products. Well, I have to mention one thing too, it is going to be like an advertisement, but this year in our Bank Administrating Administration Institute, we received six gold TV awards and also we received the Bank of the Year award too. All this success came from one single channel actually. But you could also think about other uh, rewards which are quite tiny, but these are not tiny rewards. They are quite huge and those young engineers made it possible for us to win them in uh, a country with 80 million people that are 22 million fast pay users for example silicon valley was mentioned uh, earlier and uh, that was a reference to starbucks you consider that you are going to make a payment and you have to be present for a payment physically but in terms of mobilization you need something different take a look at apple pay it is great, but you need $2,500 in order to buy the device required to use that system. And you need to have a bank account too. But in our population, 42% of the people do not have a bank account. Then they have to have a credit card too. How many of those people actually have credit cards? You have to be tied to something all the time. You may be you may be depending on a bank account, a location, or so on. Everyone is trying to come up with an innovation. But the overall universe includes everything from banks to internet companies to telcos, ticketing companies, the state itself and private equity funds, anything you can think of. The ecosystem is quite large, but each of these individuals are depending on each other. If we are talking about mobile payments, an example is here. As of the end of the year, $125 billion is the internet commerce ratio. So what is its share in total trade? in 2015 it is going to be around two percent if we take a look at turkey internet penetration includes 36 million people and uh, the next year it is going to increase to 42 or mil 10 million people uh, other people who are involved in e-commerce and only in the next year it is going to be 16 million people and online spendings are going to be uh, increasing from 182 mil million euros to 580 uh, billion euros so what did people do in our country they have uh, also trend your they have huge market shares, around 5 to 10 million Turkish dirhams. New examples are on the way, way too. 34 million people is the number of people using e-commerce services for the first time. And 36% of those people are based in Istanbul. And the number of clients using online banking systems is around 10 million people. Another statistical data, about 19% of internet spendings in our country takes place over the mobile platform. And in 22 countries, in the top 22, after following the UAE and China, we rank third. Our user numbers increased from 1.2 million to nine times that in 2005 if we think about the number in 2002 and uh, our transaction volume also increased by 20 times so why is that there is a cost item we have to take into consideration it costs you four dollars to carry out the transaction 
in a, a physical branch. It is even more expensive in the USA. But when you use online or uh, mobile platforms, you can decrease that down to nine cents. And the efficiency increase in itself is priceless. It is projected that costs are going to be decreased about 30% in the future to think about WhatsApp as an application or Snapchat or WeChat. But only WhatsApp uh, reached a number of 500 million because it was a pioneering platform. Now I will stop here and I will talk about my own dreams in the second round of my speech. Without exaggeration, all we have to think about needs because individuals would like to see their needs being met in an application, in a new innovation. Thank you. These were quite influential statistics. But what I can think about most is the 30% efficiency ratio in banking. So, Mr. Özgür. Can we also talk about Migros on the retail side? When Mr. Jem made a good introduction, before making any comments, to be honest, you have to work hard on your ideas, plans, and programs. In These are not cultures you can establish in a matter of days or weeks. When the topic is digitalization or analyzing data, it is essential that you understand it has become impossible for traditional business models to not do that anymore. But there is also this. If you are undergoing this process, you have to be ready for quite a hard work. It's not your simple, usual journey. This journey is going to be a long and hard one with not 100% returns. Well, we are a market chain. We are uh, selling potatoes, onions, retail items. We cannot be compared to Microsoft, for example, which is involved in great uh, technological outbreaks and groundbreaking technologies and we cannot be compared to banks either. About for uh, 17 to 18 years we have been trying to analyze data on ourselves. We have learned a lot but we have also gotten quite confused. We have to uh, tell you that if you are a chain retail store, if you have a lot of stores, you will also realize that your learnings are not overlapping. If you compile them each other, you will realize that there is no overlapping patterns. Here's what I would like to say. Digitalization, yes, we are in it 100%. And individualization in terms of data analysis, we are in that too. But we should always refrain from confusion. Let me give you an example. Our customers have been uh, broken down into about 20 segments with different characteristics. Some of our customers have different habits. Some like different things. Some are looking for different things in your uh, stores. But uh, all in all, they would like to visit your stores to enjoy themselves or meet a simple need. So this means you do not have to drown yourself in a lot of complexity. After all these years, the point we have arrived at shows us that segmentation and understanding the client is very important. But when it comes down to offering specific deals to your customers, you have to spend huge shifts. And also, there is another side where you have to manage your operations. As a retailer, this is a quite big risk. You have to keep it simple. If you go into a lot of complexity, then you can create a monster which you cannot manage. I could at least say that there are two things 
our consumers are interested in. We would like to have a lot of data, but consumers do not see a lot of those. They just want to see if there is anything that appeals them, if they can enjoy themselves in your environment. This comes down to their benefits and what they feel, how they can facilitate their communication with us. This is becoming a principle for us too. Our data analysts, store designers, and marketing people also indicate the same thing to us when we gather together. Essentially, at least within my own experience in the retail sex sector, we have two types of consumers, actually. But what they are interested in can be broken down into hundreds of segments, of course. But in terms of characteristics, we can talk about only two types. Most of the people in this room, for example, as a result of urbanization, are living a metropolitan lifestyle. We have to embrace that to begin with. And secondly, we have people living in metropolitan cities without metropolitan li lifestyles. And these people are within the scope of general retail. This is all, actually. We cannot really make it too complex for us. We have to offer what people want with uh, as simple a structure as possible when managing our operations. The most important thing I would like to underline is that we have to simplify our processes with technology, both mobile technology and other platforms. We have to use them to move fast to make sure that we are uh, concluding things fast because bombarding yourselves with a lot of information and data could only lead to confusion. These are our learnings and findings in brief. I think they are going to be useful for you too. Thank you. You emphasize on the fact that simplification should also come into play with the use of technology. Mr. Ilkar, a lot of references have been made to you. Most people talked about Turkcell because with the technologies you provide, you are making the things we are talking about possible. You offer us instruments and connectivity. What do you think? What is the point we have arrived at in Turkey? As a matter of fact, the potential we have in Turkey tells us that we can do whatever is happening around the world because we also have the human resources and technical capability. In the past, we, I worked in the finance sector and now we, I am in the informatics sector. Considering my experience in both sides, we have created a lot of solutions that have been embraced worldwide. And as Tuxel, on behalf of my company, as Mr. Hakan said, we believe in cooperation. We need each other. Behind innovation, there should always be a backing up value. This can only be done with various collaborations. Tuxel was established as a GSM company. Last year was our 20th anniversary, and today we are not just a GSM company. We are a technological corporation because what we do is not merely allowing people to speak to each other. With the platforms we create, we enable uh, innovation. Intermachine communication and the Internet of Things was discussed a while ago. So as a technological company, we would like to see the realization of the Internet of Things. This means that we need to have a superior Internet platform, a fast, reliable, a communication network. This is why we are making a lot of investments. Uh, up until last year, we have made 25 billion Turkish liras. And this year, our technological infrastructure is going to get an investment boost. 
boost too. We know that with our business partners, more solutions are going to be provided. Investments and technological advancement helps us, but rather than looking at what we are doing, I would like to prefer what our partners are doing because as Mr. Jim said, they are planning something that can change the essentials of retail and then they need the real-time data processing services of Turkcell in a quite uh, integrated manner together with uh, Mr. Hakan, for example. Uh, we are backing them up with efficiency boosting capabilities. We are their technological partner, for example. We want to introduce mobility into the lives of people. With Migros, we had a project too. Uh, in order to make sure that sales managers take their tablets, leave the back office, and step into the actual store to see what their customers are doing. Instead of being locked up in the back office, they can have their tablets to manage their processes and be in the business itself. At the same time, as Turkcell, we would like to be stakeholders in such good projects. I would like to add something else too. About two years ago, when we were talking about intermachine communication, the jargon was quite industrial. We were talking about smart houses, energy efficiency, industrial efficiency too. These are important. Mr. Babajan also said that we have to focus on uh, production efficiency. But Turkey is a country where uh, big examples of creativity are being produced. And in the last year, we have been shifting towards talking about the Internet of Things. And uh, this means not only machines, but also individuals are going to be talking to each other. Let me give you an example. With an important insurance company in Turkey, we have a project. If you have a chronic heart disease, for example, you are left outside the general health care and insurance system. But actually, uh, they are far less riskier than people with diseases, non-chronic diseases, who are not taking care, care of them themselves. So within the scope of this system, we found out that some efficient and different healthcare insurances can be offered for a, our chronic patients too. Second example, which is already realized, is about the transportation side. We have about 700,000 vehicles in the transportation sector in Turkey. They go to a point, make a delivery, they return empty. This is quite a big inefficiency. But in crowdsourcing within the scope of that, if you can talk as a lorry driver to other contractors in that area after unloading your cargo, you can return loaded and two big companies, fleet management companies, can do that at the moment thanks to the infrastructural uh, efforts made so far. This allows these trucks not to waste fuel. This is a great contribution. Thank you. Right now, I would like to pass the microphone to Jim Boyner once again. You actually provided us a good introduction, and we received many good information from other panelists as well. So we are always speaking about mass personalization, a transformation from mass personalization to mass uh, customization. So what does this mass customization mean? And uh, what kind of activities and projects do you have with regards to mass customization? Thank you very much. When we first started to work on the retail sector,
our colleagues do not want to rep report what we have sold so far, but what we have missed to sell. And I thought that it was a normal thing to be carried out. I went to the shopping centers and I have my notebooks. Uh, for example, a customer steps into the shopping center and uh, asks for whether there is a red jacket or not. So I try to not uh, those missing sales opportunities. Of course, we know what we have sold uh, so far. It is uh, already known. Uh, for example, the blue jackets have been uh, sold, but we don't know which sizes of those blue jackets have been sold and have not been sold. I spent my years in order to find out which kinds of items have not been sold so far, but I couldn't receive any success from that. We have established more hippo, and uh, each customer purchases approximately 2.4 items in each visit, and they are in the systems for uh, seven or eight minutes. And the system says us, for example, Jem, a customer, visited our website, and uh, he actually checked and analyzed uh, what kind of a knickers he was looking for. He take, took a look to the uh, prices. He couldn't find out the knickers uh, because of its uh, size. So we are actually finding out the tracks which are being left by the uh, consumers. For example, I know that that customer would have bought seven or eight items, but instead of selling seven or eight uh, items, I could sell three or uh, two or three items. So when you receive all of those data, when you collect all of those uh, data and uh, embed it to the system, then we will have a chance to understand our missing sales opportunities. In this year, our uh, shopping centers will be full of with beacons and when you visit those shopping centers through your mobile phones uh, you will have a chance to identify uh, the position of those blue jackets or uh, blue shirts because those applications will tell you that the blue jackets you are looking for is just on the right side of you so those analytics will provide us an opportunity to understand what kind of items the consumers are looking for. In the September, we will launch a new application. Let's assume that your consumer liked a product. That consumer will take a picture of that product and uh, it will be a Google picture search engine. And only in eight seconds, that product that you liked will be identified, its position will be given to you. And this same technology has been used by 280 different companies. Among all of the startups, Google is the sole company who is asking the consumers, did you mean that question? because we, our system will also have the same question to be addressed to our consumers. Did you mean that? Did you look for this one? So it is such a cheap technology. I mean, our company is corporate, uh, is actually chosen this technology by negotiating with six or seven different technology companies. And I would like to underline one important fact that this technology is a very cheap technology. We are transforming our business model. I mean, it is just like a white to black uh, sort of change. Let me give you a concrete example. Every year, we are opening 50 or 60 shopping center. In 2000, Oh, uh, seven. we opened 67 shopping center. It was four, 54 in 2013. And in 2015, we aim to open 20 new shopping centers. 
uh, the numbers of the shopping centers that we are uh, opening uh, our shops uh, in terms of numerical values are being reduced but our consumers are visiting our websites and they would like to see all of the products to be present in your shops so you have two options you will either open big shopping centers department stores like zorla center or otherwise you will sell your products online there is a huge transformation i mean the, the these dot coms the websites and their potential are increasing and we are directly reaching to the uh, front door of the house of our co consumers 40 days later we will launch this big data application of our companies and we have an aim if, while we are launching this application once the consumer is taking a step we are directing uh, that customer to the right pathway so we are actually preparing and facilitating the second the third or the fourth steps that a consumer will take it is a huge ecosystem and we will launch it 40 days later thank you very much okay i would like to proceed from where we have been left i would like to address that question to Özgür Tort. within the perspective of mass customization what kind of opportunities digitalization will provide to the customer experience? We know that the customer experience will be facilitated and it will be its quality will be increasing. But what kind of an effect and impact will it have on the retail uh, shops? This is actually an issue that we have been discussing so far and we progressed remarkably. In the past, we were speaking about the CR management, but right now we know the aims and the targets of our customers. We have many good analytical tools for that. But uh, actually enabling customer to live that experience is actually shaping the CRM. What I believe is that if your consumer do not want to buy that thing, you cannot sell that product to your consumer. So if we want to save money for our consumers with this new CRM technique, we would like to get together with our consumers in different channels. We would like to encounter with our consumers in different channels. And since we know that consumers need stuff in those channels, we should be able to sell our products. You can understand it from the website visits. You can understand it from the uh, age period of your consumers. It is actually a multidimensional analysis. We have a Migros jet uh, shops, which are small in size. We have 2M and 3M uh, shops, which are bigger in size. And we have 4M or 5M uh, shops, which are even bigger in size. Uh, size and we have Magra Center uh, types of Migros and they are addressing actually the same people because uh, those shops are providing solutions to the same people in different time periods so if we can actually address to the same uh, consumer profile then our profits will be even further so these customer experiences are really dependent on the uh, right crm technique and um, monitoring the uh, customer relations in the uh, most appropriate manner so this technology is providing us a benefit and we should of course integ integrate those crm techniques with the mobile uh, actually shopping experiences many people are purchasing products on mobile and 45% uh, of our sales are conducted on mobile platforms and sometimes consumers do not find out what they do need right away but sometimes they are adding notes to their mobile phones and they are searching for those uh, products in the upcoming days 
we know that our con consumers are getting themselves ready to buy a specific product. So if you integrate all of those factors together, it is becoming possible for us to uh, follow the customer experiences. And then the same experiences will be enjoyed by the consumers in every channel. This is our ultimate aim. There is uh, a technical term for it, which is called omnichannel uh, implementation. So the consumers simply want to enjoy the same experience in different uh, channels. I do believe in this IV technology, and we are testing it in our 20 or 25 uh, shops. And th the consumers feel unique themselves. Of course, it is quite essential to design the physical facility of your shops, but if you can show immediately to your consumers what they are looking for, then it is quite probable that you will receive positive feedbacks from your consumers. For example, you are not messaging uh, your consumers while they are driving or you are not messaging the products that your consumers are looking for while they are sleeping, you are giving that data, giving that advertisement to your consumers the time they need it. Thank you very much. Mr. Hakan, we will proceed with you. There are many new banking trends because the banking is changing so much. So the uh, banking sector is providing us many opportunities on the corporate level and on the individual level. And we know that the banking sector will be even further developed. What uh, can you say about the future of the banking sector? Uh, the simplest one is the ideal one. This has been said in the previous speeches. Banking sector is a complementary sector uh, it is actually a financial intermediary agency in terms of collecting the remunerations. Independent from the time and location, the consumers want to send money and they would like to shop independent from the time and also the location. And they would like to do this not only on the online level and they would like to, uh, for example, buy tickets to the concerts on the uh, physical uh, environment of the banks. So th right now we are coming to our dream. I am speaking about a, a actually a national wallet. Koreans have a system of mobile cacao wallet. 16 or 17 banks came together and the stakeholders uh, in that actually Payment systems came together, and those banks collaborated with the telecommunication uh, sector. We called it FastPay. This is the name of our system. And with the electronic fund transfer, every uh, you can send money or collect money from each bank, and it is not limited to a specific bank, Dennis Bank, and you don't have to be the um, actually a customer of a specific uh, bank and you can collect your money and you can actually divide your money to be uh, disseminated to different banks and they are compliant with the anti-money laundering and you can send money with the equivalence of 2000 uh, TLs on daily basis and there is no uh, dependency on a simple technological device you can uh, conduct those money transfer procedures in different uh, technological devices and without benefiting from QR codes and independent from the locations and time, you can send money and receive money. We know that nobody would like to log in 16 digits of their credit card number when they are sending a money over or when they are purchasing a thing. They are concerned about this issue. And uh, with that system, with that fast pay system, the automatic transfer can be uh, conducted. So you don't have to be dependent to a location or to a technological device or, or uh, a specific time. So the 
both the private uh, companies and the uh, uh, private banks and the uh, public banks and also the retail companies have the uh, capacity to benefit from that product, that fast-paced system. And if the government supports this system, uh, in terms of collecting the money for the social security payments or the utilities payments, then it will be a, such a facilitator because just with the voice recognition technology, it will be possible for you to pay uh, your uh, utility cost. We have uh, Square, Apple Pay. These are the dominant uh, systems, mobile applications for uh, sending money and uh, transferring money. But this is a loss of energy. People want simple, simple things. And they want the automatic assessment from the big data, these are very simple systems. You are not dependent to any telecommunication uh, company. You are not dependent to specific banks. And this system will provide you to send and receive money from uh, uh, many uh, different locations and in different time periods. The Turkish engineers developed this technology uh, and maybe this was going to be mentioned by our previous speakers. Such a system should be established in Turkey with the collaboration of all of the banks because it will be a very efficient platform and it will be an antagonist platform. And this is my dream and this is my last words. And of course, this fast pay, by the way, had a huge motivation effects for us to receive those awards. We have listened to uh, many examples from the Silicon Valley, but they are all uh, dependent with each other. You have to have your technological device. You have to uh, go to the uh, actually uh, post ATM machine. So this will be a limitless system. And this is what uh, we are trying to establish, and the Turkish technology can uh, do this. This will also most possibly increase the penetration to a mega accelerated level. Thank you a lot. Now we have about 10 minutes left. I will uh, listen to Mr. Tamer and Mr. Ilker for the last two comments. So, Mr. Tamer. Based on what have been discussed so far, what do you think about the digitalization of Turkish corporations? We have social media, uh, cloud computing, and so on. How are these working together? And how does the corporate world follow this? Mm -hmm. Are we able to keep up? Actually, the picture is not a negative one, uh, not a positive one. I will just talk about that and give you some global examples. As you know, we have over 1 million companies in Turkey. And let's say about if you subtract 5,000 of them, the rest uh, are facing a grave digitalization picture. When you compare Turkey's and uh, Germany's GMPs, Germany is four times larger than us, but they're uh, investments in the uh, digitalization process informatics is 60 36 times higher and once cloud computing stepped up they integrated to it quite easily and their growth in this area was three times higher we can also say that Brazil is a benchmark their GMP is double that of Turkey's but their technological investment is 10 times bigger. About five uh, years ago, it was only three times bigger. South Africa also has a similar, similar situation. If you take a look at Turkey's corporate adaptation to new technology, technologies, we have a low mark here. There is a study carried out by uh, Boston Consulting Group including 27,000 companies all around the world. They say that, according to this study, if SMEs in Turkey transition to cloud computing, their turnovers by 15%, and they would also add 3 million Turkish diras to Turkish GMP. Mr. Jam also just mentioned 
we should not just scratch the surface, we should do more, because it's a problem of perception. Cloud computing is such an interesting area that it gives you democracy wherever you use it. Even if you are an SME of five people, you can still use the same technology as the largest bank of the world at the same speed and you use it 20 times uh, cheaper and we can see that corporates are not willing to do that despite all the benefits in Turkey so far if you are to become one of the top 10 economies of the world this problem has to be tackled the education structure and technological perception need to change. And we can actually do that. It's not so difficult because 60% of our population is below the age of 30. And we are a hardworking people. We are open to innovations, but we need that one step ahead to change things. We have employed about 60 people this year. We are sending these people to Anatolian companies in order to inform them about usage of the cloud computing technology and how this can improve their revenues. Well, actually, I said some negative things, but on the other side of the coins, these 5,000 companies out of over 1 million ones in Turkey, we have some global examples. Microsoft is constantly running benchmarking studies among global companies and I can say that the banking industry in Turkey is one of the most advanced in the world because each one is accompanied by a software company. If they made spin-offs from this country, they could become billion dollar companies. Hakan also gave us an example about selling their technological banking products to over 43 different banks. You could make a great deal of income from that, but that will still be bartering as we are in Turkey. Well, think about this. Around 800 people are working on the informatics side, although this is just a bank, a great uh, success story. With Finance Bank recently, we have carried out, launched a tablet uh, project. Their entire branch is now being offered on uh, tablets and this decreased their costs by 24%. Markafoni, for example, uh, launched an interesting project. Now they are about to become one of the biggest e-commerce platforms of the world. Other e-commerce websites and brands can do this too without make, uh, spending a lot of money just like they do on the sales and marketing side. They can create great systems. Borusan is also pioneering at first. They have created several uh, beacons, providing them about 43 different pieces of data, informing people about fuel saving opportunities and such. Coca-Cola Turkey, also another pioneering company, company, has moved its entire technology to the computing area, cloud computing. There are independent software vendors at the moment. For the last six months, we have been investing in them too. These are software development companies comprising of five to six people. They have about five to 25 million Turkish dollars of turnovers and one thing I realized that they are quite weak about intellectual property rights you need to have a specific characteristic authentic characteristic for a product and secondly they still are stuck in the middle income range although some of them beg to differ 
generally they keep their product portfolio too low too. This means our software economy is underdeveloped. Maybe the uh, informatics companies assisting these big banks we have mentioned could also announce their independence and fill that serious gap we have at the moment. So again, it's a negative picture that I've talked about, but if we have to change things, we have to take that one step further in the field of cloud computing. Well, there are some good examples, but out of over one million, as you said, we have 5,000 different companies utilizing this technology to the fu fullest. Finally, Mr. Ilker, I would like to ask you, we heard about some good examples, although low in number. They benefit from the boons of the cloud computing domain. So what do you think from your own perspective about other industries which could utilize this period of change so that they can make a big leap of big leap forward okay we are running out of time there are some nice examples from other speakers i'm not going to repeat those at this point i think we need to be courageous Currently, the service sector seems to be in the foreground and it seems to be advantageous. But retrospectively, from manufacturing to mining, there are opportunities for digitalization. In the next years, we will still have other industries that we think should also benefit from digitalization. I have two different examples. One is from the state. We can say a lot about the idleness of the state, but last year there was the Tarsier project announced by the Ministry of Agriculture. Turkey is a big agricultural production producer, but agriculture is not digitalized yet. Today we do not know exactly how many uh, agricultural lots we have, what kinds of crops are being cultivated and what kind of training is being offered to farmers these are unknown and we cannot have sufficient data to analyze the future of our grains for example but the Ministry of Agriculture realized a great project which involves uh, erection of more than 4,000 observatory poles all around Turkey. These are going to have sensors to monitor humidity levels and growth rates of crops. With the data to be uh, obtained from these sensors, we are going to be able to project future agricultural production. If you take a closer look, you can realize even agriculture can benefit. The second example is from mining. We don't have a lot of natural resources, but there are some underdeveloped countries with a lot of resources. In South Africa, for example, China is running mines, mining minerals. In the next year, we can carry out, in the next years, we can carry out mining operations in some of these underdeveloped countries too. There, there are no obstacles because thanks to ultra broadband, technologies it is possible for you to communicate with the other end of the world today we are having the fourth generation of uh, communication technologies and the fifth is in the way they will be uh, i mean mining operations will be able to <coughs> use their virtual reality headsets and communicate with people on the other side of the world these are only some of the considerations which can fill the entrepreneurship spirit of Turkey. We may be lacking in natural resources, but we can still be engaged in this area in other parts of the world thanks to the benefits of emerging technologies. Thank you. These were two striking examples at the end of the session. 
as a result of these discussions, we understand that the possibilities are endless with anal analysis of the big data. And it's at the tip of our fingers, although there are some obstacles. Despite the fact that we are still at the beginning of the penetration curve, thinking about the benefits we can get in terms of corporate growth rates, Turkey is ready to grab the opportunities at hand. This increases our motivation, but there are still obstacles to be overcome, and it can be done when industries go hand in hand. Still, on the other hand, we need legislative regulations too. We shouldn't fear digitalization, but we should fear being late at it. So, I would like to thank our panelists for sharing their opinions with us, and you, our audience, for listening to us with patience. This was a session about big data. Hope you 